Life in quarantine has not stopped the news, trends, or pop culture. So here to me in our edition of Top of the Hour is Rudnick and Cardilli. That's Ryan Rudnick and Olivia Cardilli, my friends from Monotach High School. The senior gang is here. Um, so firstly, I'd like to get uh, both of your opinions on uh, Governor Murphy's decision to keep the New Jersey school system closed for the remainder of the school year for in-person sessions. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Considering the number of coronavirus cases, I honestly believe this, that this was the best decision that could have been made. I don't think that going back to school would have been a viable option right now, unless until that is there's a cure or a vaccination. So, of course, I do think that it was the right decision to be made, but I'm so disappointed because I really wanted to go back for my senior year and walk the halls one last time. Yeah, me too. Ryan, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I feel that closing schools really is the best option because – the way that schools are, the overcrowding, the um, the crowded hallways and stairwells, we would have to be wearing masks the whole time. I don't know how they would manage this because even during lunch, it really wouldn't work out for us to go back to school. And although I am really disappointed that this is how senior year has ended because I was not expecting this a couple months ago, um, it, it is the best option. Is a sort of senior surprise, I guess. Of course, also going on right now, we have seen, of course, college board has to adapt to that. People paid for the AP tests, and you've got mixed reviews going on right now about the tests themselves, and also reports of there being some troubles, some people barely being able to finish the test because of the time constraints, and also some people not being able to finish the test, some glitches going on. Um, so, Olivia, as far as um, I took the AP Gov test, so what are your thoughts on college board's decision to take this new route as far as testing is concerned, and uh, what are your thoughts on it? Well, there's a part of me that's actually disappointed considering how hard we worked all year and how much I've actually been studying for these tests, assuming there is going to be multiple choice too. So on that front, I'm a little sad. Well, not sad, a little disappointed that all my hard work went to waste. But I definitely think that this is the best option because obviously people have the ability to look things up online. So multiple choice isn't even an option because everyone could get 100 on that. But in terms of the writing questions, I did feel like the time constraints, for example, the first question, we had 25 minutes to write an essay. Even if I had an entire outline next to me, like on the information I needed, I don't think I could even write a well-constructed, well-written essay in those time constraints. It's just not enough time to get your thoughts. And we've been practicing writing those essays with like basically an hour to the entire class block. So it was really difficult to write a well-constructed, well-thought-out essay with 25 minutes, even though I did have my notes next to me. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, AP Gov test, it was easy, but at the same time, I mean, it's just hard. I felt like the mind, you know, it's not really worth it at that point. It felt so watered down. Ryan, what are your thoughts on AP testing this year? So I really admire the way that they're doing it with the FRQs. However, it, it feels like a waste that it's only testing on small parts of what we've learned. And I they have tried to include a lot of the year in each question, but it just feels like so much is left out that I'm not really able to express my knowledge in the topics. But um, yeah, the multiple choice wouldn't have been able to work. And the FRQs, I've seen that different people have different questions even, so that it's it really eliminates the ability to collaborate. Also, I think one of the biggest issues is that um, a lot of people were, like myself, were relying on the multiple choice to help our grades, and now our entire grade is solely based on these two questions. And even if we do know the information, it's hard to determine what exactly they want us to say because there is a rubric saying they have to say this, otherwise they don't get the score. And even if we know the information and we have a good idea of the, con of the concept that we're talking about, it's just, it's difficult to hit all the bullet points. And so I was really relying on multiple choice to help me with my grade. And so now I'm a little bit more nervous, even though the FRQ was easy in terms of I knew exactly what they were asking and what to say. I'm not sure if I hit on all the points they want me to. Yeah. And, and quarantine life as a whole is really changed. I mean, people are talking about needing some routine again, you know, and I think that's important for anything. You need to have some kind of routine. Um, but at the same time, there's a whole new routine that comes from doing remote learning every day. People who are doing school from bed, rolling out of bed at the last minute. So, so Ryan, what are your thoughts on this? I myself, I, I admit I have been doing school from bed and it's been difficult for me to sometimes wake up on time 
but I always make sure to get all my work done and I do keep a routine. I make sure to, to run and work out every day and I keep that routine in my life, even though sometimes I'll sleep in a little bit. I just, I'm, my grades are fine for now because I am getting all my work done. Yeah, me too. I, I got the Schoology app on my phone now, so I just got to check and see if there's something on there. And if not, go back to sleep. Best thing in the world. Uh, anyway, um, of course, now, I mean, even though we do start to have, uh, you know, these procedures in place, things are starting to improve in the state right now. We're seeing the rate of spread slow down a little bit. Um, at the same time, though, we're starting to see some people really, really push the limits of this. People who are going to try and see if they can go back out there and, and you know, gather and see people they haven't seen in a while. And that's a real concern for a lot of people. I mean, you're talking about slowing the spread. It has to be consistent. Um, so, Olivia, uh, I'm curious what you think about this? People right now, I mean, we're still reporting new positive cases every day. Uh, and so what do you think about people trying to really push the limits of social distancing and stay-at-home orders right now? Uh, personally, I don't think that you should be going out and it face-to-face -face interacting with large amounts of people. For me, when I want to see my friends, they more of sit at the end of my driveway in their car and I sit more than six feet apart from them. I haven't had like physical contact with anyone except um, one person. And the only reason I'm allowed to do that is because both of our families have been quarantined. Like my family hasn't seen anyone else except this family. Their family hasn't seen anyone else except my family. So those are the, so that's the only person I've had face-to-face -face contact with. And I think that going out without a lot of people are going out without masks now even i see a lot of people going to store trying to go to stores now without masks and people are hanging out in groups of like five people i think that's really pushing it even though the chances of getting corona uh i'm not really sure if those people have it you never really know but it's just why take the risk well ryan what do you think about this people pushing the limits during the quarantine yeah i agree that it's it's not right right now because i've gone on bike rides and seen 10 plus people in a group without masks on and it's like they think that it since it's been months that it's fine to go out now their friends must not have corona but if one of them does then they likely all will at the end of it and they'll bring it home to their families and it'll just continue the spread i'm actually still afraid of getting it because i do have a health condition which i mean thomas you know i have crps and that actually does scare me about getting it but I just feel as though, well, especially right now, there's a new strain that has been hitting kids. Actually, they don't know if it's a new strain, but it's been causing them to have strokes and they don't show coronavirus symptoms. But when they're tested, they either have corona antibodies or they do have the virus afterwards. And it's, ki and it's killing young kids now from the ages of 5 to 18. I know my mom told me that there were 75 cases in New York of this particular strain. So, and I'm not saying don't see your friends. I think people should definitely still have interactions, but you could do that outside on a bike ride. You could stand six feet apart. You don't need to be all huddled together in large groups of people. You could still be outside just, or if, or if you need to be closer, wear a mask, wear gloves, just take precautions. Just don't, people have this idea that they're invincible and that's what's why the number of cases still continues to rise. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better myself. Ryan Rudnick, Olivia Cardilli, thank you. We'll be back right after this.